But when the crunch came and Catherine was effectively ousted from Tavistock House and set up at, at Gloucester Terrace, Georgina insisted on staying and her parents were horrified because they had assumed that she would be moving out with Catherine and they feared that if she stayed that Georgina would be giving credence to Dickens's lies about Catherine being an unfit mother. She fell out with the Hogarths. I don't think she ever made it up with her mother. And the question is, why? And to get an indication of why she was doing what she was doing, we need to rewind five years and go back to 1853, when Dickens was obviously getting dissatisfied with Catherine. And one of the ways in which he showed his distaste for Catherine's presence is showing that he preferred to spend time with Georgina. One thing he would do, for example, in their holiday homes. Now, the holiday homes that they had in Broadstairs and when they went abroad always needed some rejigging. And Dickens virtually moved in with Georgina sometimes into her bedroom, not sleeping in the same bed with her, of course, but he would have his washing facilities moved in so he could use it as a dressing room or he might have his writing materials used in because he'd find it a quieter place where he could work. He wouldn't think twice about going into her in the middle of the night and waking her up because he wanted a conversation or he wanted her to get up and go for a walk with him. That's shocking. I mean, for a man to walk into an unmarried woman's bedroom, Yes, that's, that's quite scandalous. Yes. Similarly, when he went to Italy with um, Augustus Egg and Wilkie Collins, he used to write alternatively to Catherine and to Georgina. If you compare the letters, the letters to Georgina are much warmer and imply he can't wait to see her again. With Catherine, he's saying, this is just a business letter. And you have to imagine what it must have been like for Catherine and Georgina reading these letters out to the rest of the family and how different it actually sounded. And as they lived together, I suppose they could be receiving them literally in the same room at the same time. Yes, yes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Dickens was being extremely reckless and not realising what he was doing because Georgina was in her 20s. She hadn't got anybody else on her romantic horizons. And here she had this brother-in-law paying her all this attention, nobody else around, and the inevitable happened. And she appears to have fallen in love with Dickens. Certainly her niece, Katie, Dickens's second eldest daughter, and her friend noticed that Auntie Georgie appeared to be in love with Dickens. On the positive side, she was very sensible. She did stir things up a couple of times between Catherine and Dickens deliberately. And she did try flirting with Dickens and he soon put her right about that. (laughs) But ultimately she knew that nothing was going to come of it. She would have realised that her feelings weren't reciprocated. And she certainly didn't want to give up the life she was leading. So she didn't want them to separate. Fast forwarding now, four to five years when things are really starting to fall apart. She was prone to be more sympathetic to Dickens than she was towards Catherine. So when Dickens fell in love with Nellie Turner, Nellie, who was an 18-year-old actress, same age as Katie Dickens, and he said there was nothing in it. His motivation towards Nellie was purely as a mentor or as a guardian figure, because she was, um, she had, she was fatherless, as were her sisters. Georgina believed him. 